Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we are going to be looking at the weekly meta breakdown for the Timeless Best of Three format. We got Modern Horizons 3 that released about a week ago, and it's had a major impact on the format. A lot of playable cards. This is probably one of the most pushed sets that we'll get into the client probably ever until like Modern Horizons 4. This is a very strong set. Uh, Modern's being shaken up quite a bit. So we are going to be looking at a data set from Untapped GG, companion tool that runs alongside Arena's client. I agree it's user win rates because there's a whole bunch of cool stats. Link for Untapped if you want to use it to track your own win rates and just look at some of the stuff is in the bio. And then I'll paste all these deck lists with timestamps so you can copy paste to your heart's content. We are going to start off, folks, with looking at the popularity, kind of the spread of what type of decks you'd most likely to run into in terms of popularity. And then we'll look at corresponding win rates of the decks themselves, uh, both from ladder results and then some individual uh, decks that kind of popped up that look pretty sweet. Uh, so we'll take a look at those. Um, I did best of one. So if you're more of a best of one gamer, that video is already up. If you're looking for historic, historic best of one's already up. I will be recording best of three after this. So I'm going to try to get you covered on all these modern Horizon 3 impacted formats as soon as possible. Um, if you do enjoy this type of content, before we jump into it, Trying to hit 15,000 subs. We are very close to 13,000. So if you haven't subbed to the channel, free, easy helps it out. Greatly appreciate it if you can. If you have likes to the comments, go a long way to help uh, just kind of keep the content afloat. But let's jump into it. Most popular deck, Boros Energy. Um, been playing a version of this in Historic, and it is so much fun. Uh, a lot of different ways you can build it. A lot of modern decks that are kind of popping up with this kind of theme. I'm looking to build this in modern as well in paper. I just really, really enjoyed this deck and a lot of the new cards in it. We have Racto Scam, just a shade under, about 18 and a half. And then it pretty much drops off to Mirror Control. Four Color Show and Tell, Racto Spurn, Gen Midrange, all about 2 to 3%. One thing I'll note in this video, um, Four Color Show and Tell still shows up at a relative win rate. It's the exact same deck. They haven't added a single new card to the deck list. I'm just not going to cover it. You could just look at past videos, like past deck lists. It's exactly card for card the same. They just added in Misty Rainforest into the mana base. So let's focus on new decks that are, look fun in that respect. But uh, the trend line doesn't really make much sense to look at right now, just given that the format's basically, what are we looking at? Six days old. Um, but let's jump in. So I'm going to look Platinum to Mythic just to give us a nice population. It's still fairly early. So if we go lower, um, it's going to be a bit smaller. And keep in mind, I'm just doing minimum cap here in terms of games, just to give us a diversity of decks. At this point, the format's still shaking up. It's to give you a general idea. Some of the win rates, because they're smaller populations, could just be one user in some cases. Um, but we'll kind of take a look from there. So we're going to start off. Boros Energy actually has the highest win rate. There's a few different variations of the deck. Um, I'm going to show you two concurrent back to back. Uh, and then one's a Luris version, one's not a Luris version. They're not concurrently the highest win rates, but it just gives you kind of a compare and contrast. There's a few different ways you can take the deck. Uh, so this version is at 81% win rate, however, only 21 games. The core of this deck, what you're looking at, you got a Johnny Nakadal Pariah, probably my favorite card from the set. Two bodies, fairly easy to flip with the cat synergies, and then just basically if you own another red card, just starts fireballing your opponent. You have removal package, galvanic discharge, as well as sorts to plowshare. Guide of Souls, Soul Warden, that gives you energy, and then you can pay energy to give your creatures added power, flying, and become angels. Jolted Awake as a reanimate. Ocelot's Pride, while dying to Bowmaster, it goes very wide, very quickly. Uh, you can trigger the life gain off Guide of Souls. It's a cat, which would flip a Johnny. So there's a lot of kind of synergy there. A couple copies of Regavan, Static Prison, just a one mana removal spell. It does have a cumulative upkeep of an energy, but you can also just play this as a way to just generate some energy. Uh, Amped Raptor, very, very pushed uncommon, basically kind of cascade with the energy. Uh, so you can, you always get two energy, but then you can cascade it from your hand uh, to get another cast cost, which is pretty sweet. Goblin Bombardment, really like the addition of this. You can go fairly wide with the deck. So just being able to like machine gun down your opponent's stuff uh, and then just turn any creature into kind of added value. I wasn't very big of a fan of Inti in the list, to be honest. Most of the time when I was playing, you were basically playing cards from exile which we'll get to from another card just wasn't really pleased you weren't getting really big you're going more wide than anything uh so i think this is the most cuttable card i do like the addition of pia in the list 
Uh, thanks to Unstable Amulet, as well as the Cascade effects, uh, you do get a lot of cards that you can cast from Exile, and then you get a lot of value there. S similar with Regavan lets you cast from Exile, and then the Amulet lets you pay two energy, and then basically Exile a card. You can play it until you Exile another card with Amulet, not to lend a turn, anything like that. And then whenever you cast a card from anywhere other than your hand, you get to ping one damage. So this includes Lurus casting things from the graveyard, Ragavan from Exile, uh, Amped Raptor from Exile. Uh, if they do Divine Purge and you cast stuff from Exile, all kind of hit them with that regard. Uh, mana Base, just a bunch of duels. You got Inspiring Vantage, Monumental Henge as a way to find uh, historic cards. So that gets you your artifacts or your legendaries in this particular build, uh, which is pretty nice. Lurus, Stepping Silence for more Storm style decks. Fragment Reality is cheap catch all removal. Static Prison. Just more removal kind of in. Disruptor Flute's the new kind of pithing needle style effect. It's both like a tax and a needle. So you can even just say name show and tell and it costs three more to cast, which is oftentimes like all you need against show and tell, just a couple extra turns. License source for graveyard hate and then winter moon. So because your Lurus can't play Blood Moon, this is another way to kind of lock down your opponent's mana if they're playing a greedy or mana based deck. So the other version, 75%, so this is a little bit more akin to the modern version. Um, we're seeing Fable the Mirror Breakers as well as Flage in here. Flage has been really nice against the scam decks, just recursive in that respect. This version's also on Phalia, Exuberant Shepherd, that lets you blink. So you can exile your opponent's permanents. Uh, they do get come by play, but like say a Bowmaster token or something like that uh, plays pretty nicely. It also lets you kind of rebuy your Fables, a Johnny, stuff of that nature. Otherwise, the deck's pretty similar in that respect. Um, this version's got a Den of the Bugbear. You'll sometimes see the red rare land as well that gives haste. That one's been pretty impressive. Checking out the companion. Pithing Needles, uh, Static Discharge uh, Prisons, Containment Priest for reanimate, kind of cheat into play decks, Graveyard Hate, Arcan of Emeria for multi spell decks, and then Blood Moon for the greedy mana bases. So very similar kind of concepts, just playing a little bit bigger with Flage and Fable over some of the smaller stuff. I tried a version by with playing Fury, but you're basically just not really getting the card advantage because you're not blinking it um, at instant speed with something like uh, ephemerate or reanimating so i found it not as effective uh, but flage was really really good in the games i was playing we then go to rakdos burn so 76 percent so pretty stock burn list but it's just adding the amped raptor in here now a uh, nice little cascade effect that gets you just basically two for one value which is what you really want in these types of shells mount doom in the mana base uh, and then Barbarian Ring, just another way to have the so threshold, seven cards in the library, and then it's just one mana plus sacrificing. So two mana as opposed to Ramanop Ruins that you have to invest five mana into. So a lot easier to kind of pop off with the Barbarian Rings. A uh, Hopeless Nightmare also in this version. Uh, sideboard Grave Expectation is Graveyard Hate, or just kind of stealing stuff from your opponent's library. Removal of Bitter Triumph, Eidolon for lower curve decks, and Roiling Vortex for like Storm show and tell or control style strategies moving on teamer energy so kind of a wild one here uh so you have lightning bolts ragavans pierces uh stifles just for the early game some mana drains interesting to see like growth spiral style effects you got the elementals of fury subtlety and endurance some okos some royal scions which is an interesting one target creature gets plus two oh gains first strike and trample time to turn uh, you also have the ability to draw discard, but with like Fury being double strike is pretty big. Uh, you have Goifs in here that get pretty big. And then similarly, this version is playing Questing Beast. So how, for those unfamiliar, if you have First Strike, or I guess Trample and uh, Death Touch, it only needs to deal one damage. All other damage goes over on the stack. So a Minskin Boo, so just kind of like a teamer mid-range value pile. I don't really like Questing Druid in this deck, given that your curve is very high. It's going to be hard to cast some of the stuff here. I would probably just either play something like Deathrite Shaman or just kind of true up the numbers of things like Lightning Bolts uh, kind of mixed into there. It's just, it seems hard to, like you want the cards in your hand because you can't pitch like cards that are in exile. So like if you have no cards in hand and you get cards in your exile, you need something to pitch it to. Um, Sideboard, Veil of Summer for protection, Cinder Vines for heavy spell-based decks. Is it Charms a weird one here? Not sure why it's in here. There's just, you want counters or... Seems like it's doing everything really bad. 
but uh, just more elementals and then the clothes in here. Uh, honestly, just play the flutes probably is the easiest kind of catch all in there. Uh, you probably also want to maybe just play Blood Moon in this type of shell. I uh, would play pretty nicely as well. Then go to Demir Control. So this is the Luris deck. Um, what well, we're getting a couple more cards in here from the new set. So we have Psychic Frog. Two mana, one, two, seeing some legacy play as well. Deals whenever it deals combat damage to the player, a planeswalker, uh, you draw a card. Nice to see these cards now kind of also meaning planeswalkers, which some of them in the past uh, didn't. Uh, you can discard a card, put a one one counter on Psychic Frog, and then exile three cards from your grave uh, your graveyard, your grave saving saying graveyard and library together. Uh, against flying till end of turn. So just a useful kind of effect here. Uh, interesting to see like search for Scantha in this list. But just a lot of counters, mana drains, drown in the lock, counter spell kind of all mixed into here. Versions also on Nether Goy. Uh, just a big creature that can be escaped from your uh, your graveyard by exiling four different permanent types. That's kind of the Demir deck. So we've seen the Demir Valky Jace. This one's just a little bit more creature dense. Sideboard is a lot of one ofs here. So for Storm, we have Fluster Storm in the format. Uh, we have Golem's Fight here, just cheap removal uh, that you can also then just get some value from your graveyard. Minor misstep for cheap mana spells. Needle, you should just play Flute probably. Pierce, Snare, so just a bunch of like interaction. The Swarm Saboteur is an interesting one, I guess, for like the mirror just kind of keep making discardable threats um just sweepers toxic deluge is a big card that's coming through the format giving these black decks another sweeper option uh over something like meat hook massacre where you might be limited on the mana that you can produce finally get to the racto scam deck 64 percent um so this version here you got fury you have grief and then you have kind of the reanimate package so troll can be uh, pitched uh, to find a land with the triggers on the stack you can go into full control mode target your elemental with not that after all comes back into play to get you kind of double value you can also just reanimate it on turn one interesting this version is opting for only two bowmaster but the full set of impetuous loot monger uh, so this card here enters a battlefield discard a card then heist target card so you get steal card from your opponent's graveyard um, same with Grave Expectation, so some value there. Flare of Malice to sack your small stuff. You can do a kind of cool one with Crox's trigger on the stack, flare it away if you're in full control mode. Seeing a gate in here for some value that could be fetched as well. Um, interesting. So I guess against the slower decks, you could bring in another Regavan, Extractions, Flute. So just removals, Bowmasters are relevant, two durable effects, Vortex versus Show and Tell, some sweepers. Kind of two for one value against heavy control. You have also have a mixless. Moving on, salt eye mid, uh, sixty four percent mid win rate. Um, so this deck here, just good value cards. A very similar kind of concept. It's just grief as your planeswalker. It's basically blue black, uh, mid range control that then also has access to Oko. Um, bruises in here, mana drains, death rights. So just interact, tear apart your opponent's hand, counter stuff. And then just kind of went through that. Nothing like revolutionary here. Just a bunch of good Sultai cards. Pick your poison. Just flexible removal spell. It needles and flute in this version. Some disruption and counter spells. Surgical extractions for combo. Or just graveyard hate. Edicts. Another drown. And then brazen boro. Just as a tempo play. Uh, that comes in. Can root bounce. Reset like troublesome permanence. And then um, also just be a threat there. We have... Four color domain zoo. Uh, so this one here, we can call a kitty cat tribal. 63%. So this version here is adding a Johnny and Amped Raptor. That's also the Luris companion for a zoo deck. So get off a of leyline binding, but playing just a bunch of powerful threats. Uh, Wild Nakatal is another cat, incidentally. So is Nashiba Brawler. So cats that were already being played that now get the added bonus of a Johnny. Bunch of burn, disruption, death right for card advantage, or like value. Then you also have breakout in this deck that can help you dig for specific cards. Uh, then sideboard, pretty clean here. Artifact enchantment hate, activated ability, uh, kind of cheating play. So whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. So you can uh, counter all the pitch elementals, uh, counter omniscience, everything like that. 
and then Bowmaster for the heavy card draw decks. Moving on, we have Grixis Shadow, so 58%. So a couple new cards being featured here. We have Dismember, which very annoyingly is printed out of Mythic, and it's like special guest, so it's like next to impossible to open these. I open over 250 packs between draft and just buying packs, and I got one special guest pitch elemental. That's all I got from the set, which is kind of wild. Uh, we also see uh, one of the new modular lands, so sink into stupor can deal three damage to yourself. That comes play untapped, but you can also just use it as a spell and when needed to return target spell or non-line permanent opponent controls to its owner's hand. So kind of some value there. Playing the Nether Goyce in here as well. Um, I wish this wasn't special guest because this expression expressive iteration art is so so good. Uh, seeing the, the Tartans in here as well. Uh, so just then again, Lurishell, a bunch of cheap removal. We're seeing a lot of these kind of similar cards. The Toxic Deluge is pretty cool with like Shadow out because you can kind of pace your own Shadow outside of uh, the Sweeper range. Uh, and Pain Life is actually beneficial in this deck. Uh, very useful against like the energy decks or stuff that's going wide. Moving on, we go to four color elementals, Money Pile, Beans, whatever you want to call it. So up the Beanstalk. For those unfamiliar, uh, this triggers a card draw when you evoke an elemental. So normally you're down a card. Well, this deck, you still kind of break even. Uh, you have Leyline Bindings, which will also trigger the Up the Beanstalks. We have Flage in here, uh, just kind of another value play, gains your life, comes back from the graveyard, which is nice. Nissa is another sweet card here. So Nissa triggering off Landfalls will give you both mana, but then also tutor you Elementals or Elves. Uh, so you have Omnath, as well as all the pitch Elementals that it can tutor as well. So another way to get Virtual Card Advantage. One Ring, Omnath, Minskin Boo kind of in here. Uh, this is the complete opposite of a budget-friendly deck. Looking at the deck itself, the only cards that aren't rare or mythic are the Up the Beanstalk and the Lorien's Revealed. Uh, I think the mana base, other than a basic, is also all rare. So uh, this is the big baller deck, the pay-to-win gamer that's winning at a lower rate than the Boros Energy players and a lot of other decks. Uh, again, just needles sack kind of effects this might be a little dated there's not as much um yog going around veil for protection endurance as a way to hate on graveyards force of vigor for effect and shaman hate and then elish norn with for like enter the battlefield style effects then going to some players decks so this isn't the largest sample size but i thought this was a cool deck and kind of the strategy some people were trying out so six and oh they got into mythic this is Rogarans, and it is a Buried Alive Phoenix deck. So Buried Alive lets you search for up to three creature cards and put them into your graveyard. Well, you can find three Arc-like Phoenixes. Uh, with those, then you just kind of chain together a bunch of spells, get them back for value. Dark Ritual lets you go turn one Buried Alive, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then you have like Strike It Rich, which is kind of a layaway effect that you can put them away uh, for subsequent turns. So you can even go like turn one Strike It Rich, turn two Buried Alive, uh, sorry, Dark Ritual, Buried Alive, and then just play another spell, and then you get them back. Uh, Finale lets you recast stuff from your graveyard. We have the Detective Phoenix. This thing was great in draft. Uh, lets you bestow it from your graveyard for a mana, uh, and then Collect Evidence 6, which is pretty easy when you're just putting a bunch of cards in your graveyard, and then Target Creature gets plus 2-2 two, two, and has Flying in Haste. Version's also playing a single copy of the Demi Lich uh, and one copy of Fury. Uh, Cheating on mana stuff, graveyard hate, and tutor stuff. The siege, I guess, as a demonic tutor style effect. I right, just played demonic tutor. Uh, Leyline of the void for graveyard hate, shielded one ring. So if they're hating on the graveyard a lot, you can kind of just pivot it into more of a mid range style shell. And then lastly, this is Omni Eldrazi 25 and 5 for a Simic pile. Eldrazi are here. So this one's a kind of a wild one, and you'll see. So we have Ledger Shredder, and you're like, why is Ledger Shredder being played in a deck with a bunch of colos and stuff? Uh, so what you're trying to do with this deck is put cards into your graveyard, Sea to Hope, Traverse the Uvenwald, uh, stuff like that. And then it is a Shifting Woodland deck. So if you have Delirium, you can pay four mana, and it, the Woodland becomes a copy of target permanent card in your graveyard till end of turn. Activate if there are only four more cards. So if you have Omniscience in the graveyard, it becomes copy of Omniscience, then you just kind of go off, you can cast... Emrakul the Promised End, Emrakul World Anew, Null Drifters get you card advantage, Devour Destiny. 
uh, gets you a whole bunch of value. You have one rings, Disciple of Fraley's kind of chains, gets you more cards. That's uh, so pretty sweet. You can also just channel into a big thing, uh, which is also kind of cool in that respect. Ugin's Labyrinth is a way to kind of get ahead on mana. Pick your poisons, veils for protection, flutes for value, dismember is removal, endurance for uh, graveyard hate, Ugin's Binding uh, lets you. It's a one, like a three mana bad bounce, but then once you cast a seven drop, is basically a cyc uh, cyclonic rift. So some value there. And then force of vigor for artifact enchantment here. So there's a lot of talking. Uh, the format seems pretty wide open right now. I'm glad to see the energy decks. Um, welcome your perspective on stuff like that. Uh, still really early. So if you're looking for stuff like the scam stuff, seems to be pretty safe. The energy decks have a lot of different variations. Uh, seems pretty safe. The other stuff like this is probably a little glass cannony, but it's working for some folks. I just I'd be curious to see how consistent it actually is. Um, but let me know what you think. Catch you in the comments. Thanks for watching.